everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another weekly meal prep. So this day my daughters were just sitting out on the porch and I wanted to cut up this pineapple I had gotten because I wanted to make some pineapple infused water to sip on while I was working. If you guys have been watching my channel for a while, then you know I love having something just to sip on while I'm cooking or working on a project. So I also doubled up and had this as one of our cut up fruits for the week. Per usual, I am going to be breaking the week down in two days and just telling you what I am prepping for each day. Some days I use freezer meals from my freezer prep videos that you see on my channel and then other days I'm actually prepping things for the week. So Monday we are going to have shrimp tacos with coleslaw and then potato wedges and the potato wedges are my home canned potatoes so those are easy to pull out on Monday night when we are ready to eat but I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of prep the shrimp and get that ready so all you need to do is put a little bit of taco seasoning over the shrimp these were already frozen so all I was going to do was put them into a reusable Ziploc bag and pop them in to the refrigerator so they could slowly thaw and kind of collect all of those great spices and as usual I will have the links or the recipes written out in the description box for everything that you see in this video. Now we're going to put together the coleslaw and it's very, very simple. A huge thank you to Ruggable for sponsoring this week's video. Ruggable makes beautiful machine washable area rugs, runners, and doormats to help unlock possibilities within the home. Whether you are a pet owner or a mom like me, keeping a rug clean can be a big challenge. But Ruggable's two-part patented system helps you out in a big way by making it washable, interchangeable, stain resistant, non-slip, pet friendly, and made to order. The bottom layer has a non-slip pad and a cling effect texture. The washable rug cover is soft and stain resistant, has interchangeable designs and reinforced corners. We have used Ruggable rugs for years and since we are currently making over our living room space, I definitely wanted a new Ruggable rug to fill that space and to fill our needs. So check out the link in the description box to get your discount code and to shop Ruggable. I know that you will love it as much as we have for years. Their quality is unbeatable and the entire design is absolutely amazing. All right, back to meal prepping. So we are now going to prep the coleslaw that's going to go into the tacos with the shrimp. I adore coleslaw in tacos. I just think that it adds such a great texture and a nice fresh flavor into the tacos. So this recipe is really simple. You're just going to have a little bit of Greek yogurt, a little bit of mayo, some lime. You're gonna see me use lime twice in this prep. I just had a little bit of a craving for lime and it's such a fresh pop of flavor in your recipes. Of course, with it being summer months and having a lot of access to fresh herbs, I'm using them in all of my preps right now. So I just chopped up some cilantro and I dumped the sauce right on top of that coleslaw mix. I love those mixes. They are so convenient and save you a lot of mess in your kitchen. And then I just combined everything and put that into a container so that it would be ready to go when we were ready to build our tacos after frying up the shrimp. All 
All right, so Tuesday we are going to prep some burrito bowls and I think this idea is so fun. I have not done this before, but I just cooked, but I just got out some ground beef and just started frying that up along with some brown rice. And I just seasoned the beef a little bit with a few seasonings. I really didn't measure anything. Just kind of the things I normally would put on like taco meat or something like that. So once I put all of the spices in there, I just went ahead and let that fry up together. And then earlier in the day, I had gotten out some corn from the freezer and just let it thaw out. And this recipe is linked below, but this is called a street corn salad, a Mexican street corn salad. And you could eat this honestly by itself, but I think adding it into a burrito bowl like this just takes your burrito bowl to the next level. So you're just gonna dice up up some red onion again with the cilantro got to get that in there and again with the lime just adding all of these fresh flavors makes for a really delicious cold salad and saying cold salad this actually can be heated up right along with all of the rest of your ingredients so it can really be eaten cold or hot and if you guys know me then you know I love feta cheese I will put it on anything and everything so the fact that it was in this recipe was definitely the cherry on top for me Now we're gonna go ahead and dice up some fresh tomato. To be honest, you could go crazy with the different options of what you wanna put into these burrito bowls. And you could also put them into jars. So I was thinking about this. You could layer them in a mason jar and have them in the microwave just like that. Or you could put them in a bowl. It really doesn't matter. I went for this kind of layered look in my meal prep containers. So I did some meat, I did the rice, once it was cooked up. I did the street corn salad and then the tomatoes and some black beans. And I just took these right out of the can because I knew I would be heating this up when we were going to eat them on Tuesday night. One other thing that we will be adding to these when we go to eat them after they've been heated up is probably a drizzle of ranch and a little bit of sour cream. Okay, so Wednesday, we've got a creamy Tuscan sausage and zoodles, and oh my goodness, so delicious. So first of all, you all know that I have a huge thing for zucchini noodles. I love them, and I'm gonna be showing you the new machine I just got to make them, and it's so fast and easy to make them with this zoodle machine. But this recipe has got all of the Tuscan flavors. We're gonna do this great sausage, and of course, I'm using a little bit of avocado oil, and then I'm shredding up some fresh Parmesan to go in it. And this recipe just really is simple because you can pretty much make it all in one pan. One exception is I will be saving the zucchini noodles for the night we actually eat this. So I am making the sauce up ahead of time. I am making it with the cream and the garlic and all of the spices and the fresh parmesan. You just dump it all together and then you just wanna let it simmer a little bit to get a little bit thickened and you're going to also add spinach to this. So I pulled my salad spinner out and just rinsed it off and spun it out and chopped it up so it was into nice bite-sized pieces. And 
And the really yummy pops of flavor in this are the sun-dried tomatoes. And I love this brand. It's just really authentic and delicious. So once your sauce has thickened up a little bit, you wanna add in those tomatoes and that spinach. You're gonna add your sausage back in and that's pretty much it for the sauce. All right, so this thing is so fun and my daughters love using it as well because it's so simple for them to do. But all you do is pop in your zucchini or your carrots or really any type of vegetable and you turn it and it makes wonderful noodles. It also comes with a few different size blades, which is great and most vegetables you can make the kind of veggie noodles ahead of time and you can just cook them up on the day you're going to eat them. And I'll just be throwing them in the pan with a little bit of avocado oil until they've softened some. And then we'll be putting the sausage sauce mixture on top of them. Thursday, we've got Salisbury steak with some roasted carrots. And this is kind of a go-to meal, I feel like, through the years that we've really enjoyed. This specific recipe, I have not made before. One thing that I decided to try out were these gluten-free breadcrumbs. We are a gluten-free family for the most part. I do, since we're a mixed family, some need gluten-free and some are okay with it. I do sometimes make recipes that include gluten but for the most part we do gluten free and this turned out perfectly So to make the Salisbury steaks, I just kind of put the patties together, made four of them and threw them into the frying pan while I prepped the carrots. So I had all of these great big juicy carrots and I just peeled them and cut them kind of around the same size. I always like to stress that rule when it comes to roasting things in the oven. You really want everything to be around the same size so that everything gets done and is cooked through right around the same time. Once the carrots were all chopped up, I just threw them into a bowl and drizzled them with avocado oil. I got out my cookie sheets and I put these mats from Amazon that I love so much. They have saved me so much parchment paper because they were great for things like this. I just spread the carrots out and then this is the way that I think they taste the best. That is with some purple onion. Purple onion is one of my absolute favorites and it just makes this recipe bump up to the next level. Now I started to chop up the goodies to go in with the Salisbury steak. I chopped up the mushrooms and the onions. I personally like leaving the onions kind of large and in strips. It just goes along with the texture of the mushrooms. And I removed the little steaks and just put those in with some avocado oil and fried them up. Now we're gonna start our kind of gravy that goes with the Salisbury steak. So I just threw some butter in the pan. If you were doing dairy-free, you could um, 
go ahead and use some more coconut oil or some more avocado oil. And then I did put some gluten-free flour in the bottom to make the gravy. Next, you're gonna be adding in your beef broth, just little by little, and if you keep whisking, it really makes a nice, smooth gravy. I tossed everything back into the pan and just kind of got it nice and coated. And then I decided to pull out one of my little baking pans that I normally prepare like casseroles and things like that for the freezer in. I just thought this would be the best way to store this meal until we were ready to eat it. So I was just gonna store it in the refrigerator. So I just piled everything in to one pan. And what I'll do is throw this whole thing into the oven at 350 until everything is heated through and we can enjoy our dinner nice and quickly. Friday we're going to actually be having a ham and potato casserole that I made in one of my previous freezer meal preps. So that will just sit in the freezer until Thursday night when I pull it out to let it thaw to get it ready to eat Friday night. But to go along with that, we're going to do a fresh cucumber caprese salad. So I started out by chopping up the cucumber into nice bite-sized pieces. I also chopped up some cherry tomatoes, some red onion, and then of course what makes caprese so delicious is the fresh mozzarella. And so I bought the little, um, I'm not exactly sure what they call them, maybe pearls? Yes, pearls is the right word. <laughs> the little mozzarella pearls to mix right into this. And then I opted to use avocado oil since it is our favorite. I choose that often over um, olive oil and you've got balsamic vinegar as well. And then a few herbs just to bring that good Italian flavor to this salad. I just felt like with a heavier meal like a ham and potato casserole, I just wanted something nice and light and fresh to go along with it. I hope this video inspired you guys. Thank you so much for watching. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Let me know in the comments what your favorite recipe was. That always helps me out. Give this video a like, and I will see you all in my next prep.